just the way I like it, baby. I don't want to live forever. Vocabulary too. I'm a hit in the distant distance. It's all brand new. You're through. I'm interplanetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Everybody, uh, welcome. After a one week of taking a holiday break, ring time is back at it. Keith and Keisha in the building for the last time for 2015. Keisha, say hi to the people. What up, what up, what up? Hey, yeah. <laughs> I had to do it a little unique today just because for the simple fact that it is our last show of 2015 and I am still as excited as I was at the beginning of the year. So, uh, hello and welcome. Yeah, um, this will be uh, almost... 48 episodes i think of fine audio we have given you this year uh we did not take any breaks throughout the course of the entire year as generally uh we have been in hiatus i think a couple of times in the last few years around this time we are here we are strong we are ready and we are giving you the best of 2015 um as you notice the show started a little differently today we generally start off with a little promo. You hear something that we've picked from the past that we like that kicks off the show. But today and throughout the episode, you will hear the fine um, musical stylings of the band Motorhead. Yes, um, yes. We just open up with a little Ace of Spades to get your blood flowing. Um, a classic track from them from 1980. Which the album was called Ace of Spades Um, It was also the most recent theme song Of the last NXT TakeOver Which was held in London The home country of the band Um, Lead singer Lemmy Lemmy Kilmeister has passed away um, At the age of 70 Uh, Lemmy passed of cancer That he had recently learned about uh, A couple of days prior Which was uh, very sad um, we got the news Monday doing Raw, most wrestling fans, and um, it's something where the music world and the wrestling world kind of converge at this point. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about Motorhead till Triple H. Then um, I knew I heard it was a band, right? So right. through the magic of YouTube and the internet, I was able to research and listen and found out. I really like their music. Like, I just didn't like the rest of the things. Like, I really like their music. Yeah. Um, And I have to think that for a whole generation of fans, that was the connection. Also, for a genera- a, a group of fans who maybe didn't listen to metal that much or listen to a lot of hard rock. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm a guy pretty much... I don't consider myself that much of a fan, but I do like a lot of different bands. If they break through, you know what I mean? 
Like, I like all the pop- popular bands. Like, I like Guns N' Roses. I like Metallica. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, but I couldn't go into a deep, in-depth conversation with you as if I did with hip-hop. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who is the nice and smooth of heavy metal. Just to be giving you a hypothetical right. scenario here. But uh, Motorhead was an uh, influential band. Um, they were your favorite rock band's rock band. You know what I mean? A lot of people who were into metal that may not have known who they were, they brought a lot of influence to the game from what I've learned and came about through them. Um, more of a cult thing here, really big in their home country of the UK. 20, 30 some odd, 40 years in the game. Uh, 30 million records sold. So, 22 albums. I mean, they've done it all, right? Right. Uh, one of their most recent albums, man, they got this track called Lost Woman Blues. It, it's a, it's a older hard rock blues feeling record. But uh, Lemmy vocals really come through strong. Um, he was a kick-ass artist. He lived rock and roll to the fullest. You know what I mean? He lived life on his own terms. He drank. He spoke. He, he was a kick-ass guy. So, um, with that all being said, we're going to roll some Motorhead throughout the show. Right. Um, right. Somewhere in the show, you're going to hear the game. You're going to hear my favorite wrestling theme song that probably goes harder. I mean... Because when you listen, and it's funny because like when you listen to like when you listen to Motorhead songs, you don't even listen to like wrestling theme songs. Like people who like jump in the car with you and listen to it, they like, oh, this go hard. They don't right. know it's from wrestling. Right. They have no ideas from wrestling. Line in the sand is the joint. That the evolution theme song, Keish. It was if off. we could have, if we could have theme music when you walk into a room. Like, I, I would love for that to hit. I would like for that to hit when I'm walking into a job interview and I got on a suit and I'm looking <laughs> like I was in evolution. And you know what I mean? That's about the only time I look like I was in evolution. And we, we go in there. But with, with that being said, uh, don't worry. We got some promos in the show um, for one of our segments. We're going to lay it down for you. You're going to hear some of the greatest promos ever. Um, Because, hey, man, 2015, we lost some serious heavy hitters in the wrestling game. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And we lost some serious talkers. We lost some dudes who define what it means to be on this microphone and do what they do and talk their stuff. So there will be an homage to them in this show. So be ready for it. Um, this is probably going to hit a little longer than most of the shows that we do um, because I mean we're going to talk about a whole year worth of wrestling and it's not just WWE, it's New Japan it's ROH it's uh, TNA uh, we're going to go through television we're talking about the champs we're going to give you a little preview of what we expect in 2016 because Keach, the first week of the year it goes in yeah. It goes in. I mean, you realize Wrestle Kingdom is coming up this weekend, right? New Japan is going down. Wrestle Kingdom 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to check the New Japan World uh, app and make sure if they're going to do um, an English stream. I, I, they got to do one. They're not doing the Global Force pay per view joint thing that they did last year. And, you know, I would like to think that that's because they did an experiment, you know, during the year. Um, and we'll go into more of that stuff, too, where they just did, you know, an English broadcast. So we'll see. Yeah, true. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I, I'm ready. Um, so... It, that's going to be a huge weekend. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a preview show for it, but we'll definitely do a recap show for it. And that might be coming in the next few days after, the, you know, maybe the day after or the morning after 
Because I, you know, after you stayed up all night and you watched wrestling in a foreign country, you might as well just go ahead and knock out a podcast and call it a day, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, as far as us, State of the Union, um, a banner year in ring time. Um, we have been very successful. We have done a lot of things. Um, we have came up with a lot of opportunities. Um, we have been as active in the indie scene in Georgia. I promise you in 2016 that will change. Oh, yeah. You'll see a lot more of us um, <laughs> at these shows. Uh, you know, like we did in 2014. 2014, we was everywhere, right? I mean, literally, we went to we went to everything. Um, I was in College Park for like two different tournaments. Um, I was there, and you know, I was uh, I went to Villa Rica. I went to Rome. So you know, what I mean, there was a lot of travel involved too. Yeah. 2016, we're gonna bring that back. 2015, we kind of sat back and let it all just kind of chill. 2016, oh, we're bringing it all back. We're gonna be around. Uh, we're gonna be at a lot of live WWE events when they come to town. Um, we're just going to be everywhere. So be on the lookout for us. Be on the lookout for remotes. Uh, we'll be posting pictures. Crazy. 2016 is going to change some things. Um, also, don't know when it's going to air, but there may be a thing, a documentary about a place in a city that we from that may include me. Um, I thought it was kind of dead in the water, but I got hit up by the people uh, from the people who produce documentaries from a series that rounds with Dice that airs on a cable channel that's kind of like HBO. That really is HBO. So <laughs> be on the lookout. That may still be going in the works. Crazy bananas things happening for Ringtime Pro Wrestling. Of course. Probably. So... Uh, be on the lookout for 2016 but without further ado uh, we're going to recap a little bit of Raw we're not going to go heavy as we usually do go into Raw for Monday night because like I said man we got a whole year to talk about right but I thought Raw was interesting um, we'll do birthdays and news and notes too don't worry that stuff is still happening but Raw quiche um not the greatest show, not the worst show. Kind of semi interesting. Yeah. Um, this goes to jail. He gets arrested. Yeah. To start the show by the NYPD. Um, Keish, apparently you showed me something. You hit tagged me in Facebook. And I said, let me leave this story. Apparently, that bug shot sparked some interest. Oh, yeah, definitely. All kinds of interest. And people were responding to it in, like, the most ridiculous ways. They're just ridiculous. I mean, I, I swear, it makes you see, it made it seem like it was just, like, for real? <laughs> like, some people made you really question was it that serious. Like, <laughs> like, it was the first thing you had to add. Like, wait, is this, is this real right now? Nah, I just can't. I don't even know. Like, it, it was just done. I was done. So, so, were people just mad because they thought, hey, these guys should not be um, wasting our tax dollars on this? Or <laughs> All right. But from my understanding, Keith, like, I was hearing um, that, you yeah, it was, it, it was just like this. People were pissed because of the fact that it's, it's him, you know? Like, they weren't really out there were really mad like not too many well like, you're really you're really angry but then you have to take in account that some people really just thought this was real i mean like that's just the the in all of the all of this so there were people that thought this was real and um our own beloved brother told me himself like 
off when they were saying, like, because um, uh, he had watched TMZ, like, the show. And he was like, yeah, they said that people were calling the, the station and asking, like, can... I'm like, what's the bail? And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Excuse me? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, it was deep. It was deep. Like, but the real question is, was it, was it that serious? Really? You got to remember that fans are nutty, right? Yes! And... With four plus million people that watch the show every week, I can't guarantee you everybody is sane. And I can't guarantee you everybody fully understands what's going on. I don't know if every adult, because I want to preface this, I get that the kids buy the kayfabe, right? Right. I can't guarantee you every adult watching understands that there is a level of reality and there's a level of make believe that goes on in the production of a wrestling show where you suspend your disbelief but you don't get stupid right right like hence when you watch the avengers you do not call the u.s army to complain about an alien attack <laughs> that is right. not what you do you just enjoy and hope the good guys pull it out exactly so with that being said um i here's the thing about it it went it wasn't too cliche they didn't go send roman reigns to jail as in steve austin as in every other guy who's ever had a confrontation with the authority uh but on the flip side of it kish how many times we going down this road it's been 18 years, okay? Right. 18 years of the heel authority figure. We get it. We got it. It's done, right? It's to the point every other company copied it, and even when it was stale, they kept running with it. So, and I mean, I've wrote about it. Like, I'm just, I'm tired of it. Like, we can run a wrestling show without the authority figures. Like, we don't need... Here's the thing. For this to become fresh again, you got to let it die. You can't... What what gives an angle life is you got to let old become new again. You can't just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. It's just exactly. going to be the same old, same old. Like, right. okay, you can't make everybody Steve Austin. That's not how you do things. You know what made Steve Austin... An incredible character. It wasn't done before. Right? Right. They never pulled the people back out front. Matter of fact, the people who were out front that were authority figures were actually kayfabe authority figures. For the longest time, I thought Jack Tunney was really the president of WWE. I really didn't know that he was a dude who was a promoter in Toronto. He might have had a real job in the office. You know what I mean? But I didn't know that it was Vince that ran the show. I just thought Vince was the announcer dude. And that worked for how many years? Right? So, I don't think you necessarily need that guy. You don't need uh, somebody to stand out front and then fight with the the authority to try to get over. No. Look, William Regal runs NXT, right? He's not really a good guy, not really a bad guy. You know who the conflict is between? Everybody in the ring. Exactly. The bad guy gets to run rough shot and be enough of a bad guy. The authority figure confirms the bad guy because the bad guy yeah. goes awry of the authority, right? Like the authority is like, no, these are the rules. You can't do that. The bad guy breaks the rules. Now, he gets in trouble sometimes. Sometimes, he gets what he wants, right? Because it's, it's an imperfect world. This is a, yeah. it's a hard, it is a hard storytelling. I don't even get how in the same company, because this is not the, of the galaxy far off, far away, right? In the same company, 
in the brand where you teach the guys how wrestling is supposed to go. You run it antithetical to the product that you produce on the main show. And wonder why the guys who come up from the developmental property have a difficult time getting over on the main show. You follow me? Because, I mean, if if I'm setting up a thing, okay, I put it like this. In most high schools, your JV football team runs the plays that the varsity team runs, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. And then what they do on varsity, it gets more intricate and they add more plays to the, to the system because you're older now, you can understand more. Right. But the basic foundation of what you're doing is laid down on the JV team when you're young and you're learning the system of the school that you're at, right? Right. Okay. So if you were to play for a JV team and then learn those plays, and then as you got on, you went to varsity and to learn a totally different playbook, you're not really getting the development that you need at the lower level. No. Right? Um, the WWE has not done that. Now, I don't know what the goal of NXT is, to be fair, anymore. I think because of the success of it, it may have changed the scope of what they're doing. We'll see if guys promote or stick around and if the pay structure changes. You know what I mean? Right. Put all that discussed at a later date. I'm just using NXT as an example of you don't need to have overbearing authority. Uh, Ring of Honor doesn't use overbearing authority. No. Um, TNA does it because TNA tries to copy what WWE does. Hence, that is why TNA has ended up where they are at in the landscape of professional wrestling. Exactly. They, stick, they have failed for number two company in the country to number three and distant three. And I mean, the only reason they're distant three is because they still find a way to get television on a national level. But other than that, I mean, it, it would... They can't. They can't even fill up the shows. But back to the original point of all of this is that you don't need that authority structure. You really don't. I think it's played out. Now the problem is the people in charge of creative are the same people who portray the authority structure. And when you get to stroke yourself on television, it's hard to come down off that drug. So. How do you tell these people, hey, you probably could stop doing this and your ratings could handle your I'm- heel faction <laughs> will become more credible if they could run rough shot over the show and not be reinforced by the authority figures as puppets of the authority figure. Because at that point, they just become a pawn of the authority figure and not their own individual star. Exactly. They don't have the room to breathe, you right. know. Well, there's, yeah, there's no autonomy. Right? No, no, not at all. Like, if you don't have the room to breathe, <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> like, it's, and then what's crazy about all of this is we all know that with the WWE, you know, nothing's going to happen to them any, any, at all, like, period, at this point. But it's just like you can't keep this going the way that it is right now with that happening it's it's not the route to go you know like um one of the things we always talk about even at my job for example is we use the word micromanage micromanaging creates the environment of uncertainty for everybody you know people don't feel confident and what they're doing because you're sitting here hovering over their shoulder and breathing down their neck like what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing you know at half the time it's not even a for a, a case of um improvement it's one of i want you to do this well in this case there is um i wouldn't use the word micromanage but they're just it's, it's just like that, though. That's what it feels like. 
you know, if things get to the point where it's just so ridiculous that you just have to step in, like, and it's just like, but why? You know, with the with the authority fiction, with the authority faction going on, like they already are in a position of, uh, you're gonna do what I say when I say it, and that's the end of it. The heel faction that, that the authority has created. It's not even wasn't even uh, it's not bad at all actually. It's actually kind of awesome. But then you have this element that you decide to add in here and there. No, no, like don't fix things that are not broken. Don't it is it it's just as simple as that. Changes can be acceptable, but just. They have to have, make some level of sense. And not only that, but man, I mean, don't make it look the way it does. It's, I don't know. I guess in my mind, all of it just is too much. Yeah. I mean, like, that's just the only way to simply put it. It's just too much. You got to drop back. They have to drop back from that. Because it is just not a good direction. It's not like there has to be something different. Yeah. Um. Aside from that, um, let's go into. Uh, here's what I figured out. Okay, so the League of Nations is going to be that hill faction. Uh. The Rio's gonna feud with Cena. Cena's back now. Let, let's address that elephant in the room. Cena's back. Um, they didn't let him lay waste to the League of Nations, which I thought was gonna kill all the credibility for the group right away. All right. Best be prepared. He's gonna lay waste to the League of Nations eventually. Um, they're gonna cost him some things. Uh, this also may be kind of weird treading for the group. As Del Rio may start stepping forward, depending on his status of his feud with John Cena, right? Right. And I don't know how the hierarchy of the group maintains itself with that happening. Um, what I would do with Rusev and Barrett is just make them a tag team. Why not? I think I think it's the best use for both of them. I don't think you have a lot of plans for Rusev. I don't think you have a lot of plans for Barrett. And I would put them in position where they're challenging for the tag team titles. I think they would give an extra shot in the arm to the division. Also, more than likely, they're going to feud with the Usos. Because the way I've seen this play out so far, uh, Lucha Dragons have been moved to the New Day's foils right now. And the New Day and Lucha Dragons are have, have their issue. So the Usos have been brought in to back up Roman Reigns. Dean Ambrose is being removed from the League of Nations scenario because he has to deal with Kevin Owens right now. Yeah. So, and that's so him and Owens itself. will have his own separate thing over here off to the side. So now insert Cena as the fourth block of the Good Guy Brigade to f- f- ward off the League of Nations. Cena's feud with Del Rio will take precedence and then there will be Roman Reigns feud with Sheamus. Now, we just saw Roman look like a rock star again on Raw. To the point of, Cena got beat down by the league. I've never seen it. So, he's Super Cena, Super Cena, if there's such a thing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Usually, I'm used to Super Cena taking out the whole group of bad guys, Bruce Lee style. You know what I mean? You know, Bruce Lee versus you 50 punks. Uh I'm, I'm used to Cena doing that, right? Uh, no, they, they let Cena catch the fade for a little bit. The Usos limped down there so they could catch the fade. And then Roman came by himself, took out the group, and then took out the leader who had a chair. So then, of course, we went to predictable storyline. Vince McMahon gets out of jail and announces that he will be special guest referee next week of the title match that will take place on Raw. Awful. Where he will blow it as a special guest referee. Some secondary referee will come in and make the count. And 
it'll be fine. But I, I uh, it's kind of like okay, so I just watched Raw from 1999. Man, how is Steve Austin gonna get out of this one? Right, because <laughs> that's exactly. what I just watched. Right, yeah, right, exactly. Now, also, it could be where, hey, Roman finds a way to win and Triple H starts getting his revenge. I don't know. Because they may hold that Triple H thing. I would hold it to Royal Rumble. But the WWE is not good at holding things in the box. They like to blow their load a little early. So, who knows when they may pull out that Triple H card. Because I think it's a very interesting card to play. And I think you can set the table for WrestleMania. Also, I mean, if I'm booking, I probably have Brock win the Royal Rumble and I'll rematch Brock and Roman Reigns. Now, because the way they think, they'll probably have Cena win the Royal Rumble. And the whole time leading to WrestleMania, there will be this internal conflict of Cena and Roman Reigns trying to ward off the League of Nations and hold down a truce yet still not trust each other because they're both trying to hold on to that title, right? I think it's going to be nutty, but I can see that being that weird theme storyline they go into WrestleMania with. Um, I don't feel any more confident in the road to WrestleMania than I did before, uh, but we'll see how Royal Rumble plays out. We got about a month to Royal Rumble before we really start setting the deck. Um... The Rock is confirmed for WrestleMania 32. That was huge news. Uh-huh. Was nobody knew what this, he was going to be a part of the event. Now, they confirm an appearance. They don't confirm a match. They confirm an appearance. It's kind of to, to everybody, um, him being there is a match. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like that, That's pretty much the end all the be all. Him just announcing that he's going to be there is enough for everyone else. As he is, that's it for them. That's just... Now, what I could see, Sheamus versus Reigns at Royal Rumble. Triple H comes and attacks Roman Reigns for his revenge, right? Mm -hmm. Cousin, Cousin Rock makes the save. That sets the table, Rock Triple H, WrestleMania 32. The war to settle the score. The battle for it all. That's right. The, the probably the most one of the most consistent rivalries in WWE history gets a final punctuation. Let I, I say, and that's your and that's your legends match, right? Right. That I think it'd be the most it'd be your best legends match because you have two guys who still can go. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. It's still, it is still having an attraction value, whereas and it's not like Sting and Triple H where there were some limitations. You had to make sure you took care of somebody. Let's or even some, a match with Undertaker where you're gonna have to try to take care of somebody. You can let these two just go. They have the chemistry. They understand each other enough. They've done it enough times over the years to kind of you know what I mean. They know how to play the yin and yang in that situation, right? They don't have, they have to. They got to know. It, it's a, almost a requirement. I mean, how else is everything supposed to function without it? Without that, I, I, got to. I don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, anything else that stuck out from Raw? That you had, that you thought about, that you wanted to throw into the mix. Geesh, cash money. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, is there anything you wanted to throw in the mix for Raw? Um, can we start with, can we start with the whole unicorn thing with uh, the New Day? Can we, can we stop doing that? I mean, I just don't. I don't like it. I don't. Like, I know they're out there doing the thing and have fun. Please, take the chains off. I can't deal with all of it. Raw was just... 
They selling unicorn t-shirts. I want to let you know. Hey, they're, they're what? T-shirts are you? At the shop. Are you serious? This is on a shirt. Who is this on a shirt? See, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. That is ridiculous. Okay, the fact that this is being exploited, I'm done with it. Okay, yes, I, I I like unicorns and everything else too. But can we not do this with the horn? I'm not. I don't like. I don't support it. Like I personally think, you know, uh, of course, you know, it goes good with them. They know how to work it out. I give them that. They know how to work it out. But I am not with the horn. I'm not with it. Uh, another thing I have to honestly say about Raw is I just, I, I like the touch that they did with, uh, I like how they got the back and forth with Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose going on. Um, people teeting up. I, I'm feeling that. I'm definitely feeling that. Um, they they definitely got them going head to head, and it's I, it makes for great wrestling. Personally, uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to see when it comes to feuds. You know, random attacks, and you know, uh, just knowing that they dislike each other, and they at any given moment of time stuff can just combust. Now, I don't like it being played out to where it's so to them having multiple matches against each other too much and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you just like it when they're just separated. But every once in a while, you know, they kind of attack each other here and there and all that. So, um, I was definitely with that. I mean, uh, uh, everything else about Raw was kind of just, eh. I wasn't really impressed. Um, I just, Thought it was kind of okay. Um, for the last Raw, the last Raw for this year, it really just could have been better. I mean, that's just pretty much my whole thought process about it. Of course, everybody excited to see Cena back and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, but you know, everything was just kind of off. Like, I just really. I, I just kind of wasn't impressed, but I I guess that's just it's the last raw of the year, so got to make the most of it, I guess, and just go with the, what what was good about it. It is what it is. All right, um, with that we will take our first break because uh, we're gonna break this show up and then chop it up in a few different pieces. And we're going to come back And then it's all about everything that happened last year Right So uh, with that We're going to the break and we'll be back Where I stand Evolution 
We are back, everybody. So, we'll do our usual birthday segment, beginning of the year edition. Uh, Ooh, kicking Jesus. off the birthdays, January 1st, Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, Hall of Famer, legendary manager, celebrates a birthday. Do you know Jimmy is 71? Right. Still look like he doing that. Still like he did in 1985. Now I'm sure there's a lot of dye involved in this process of his hair, and you know there's a lot of that's makeup too. But yeah, man. I'm on site because he looks flawless. Jimmy was born in 1944. Jimmy looks flawless. And people, have you seen pictures of this man? Like he does not look like he has aged at all. <laughs> like, he has like little bits and pieces here and there, but I swear to you, it ain't that bad. Like, what? He uh, cannot be 71. I don't believe it. I'm sorry. Just no. <laughs> uh, former Nitro girl Kimberly uh, celebrates her birthday. Kimberly is 46. Yes. Or, or, or it will be 46 on, on the first. Or actually 47. Sorry, because we're, we're going into 2016. She's going to be 47. Um, that being said, um, which also, Jimmy Hart will be 72, not 71. He'll be 72. Um, Got to add these years up, right? Uh, speaking of which, Robert Rude, uh, TNA superstar, will be turning 39. Um, <clears throat> still good, still in his prime. Also, I'm going to say this. This is a little short range. In wrestling, we got this age thing kind of thrown off. Like, we be ready to throw dudes out at, like, 32, 33, 35. You know what I mean? Right. Do you realize, like, Steamboat and Flair was in their mid-40s in 89 when they was in their prime? Killing it? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you know I- Hogan was in his early 40s in the 80s, you know, when he was rocking. Like, I don't think we understand what age means in wrestling. You know what I mean? No, no, not at all. Dusty was up there in age when he was still killing it in Crockett in the 80s. And then when he came to the WWE in the 90s, he was up here. Dustin was a grown... Gold Dust was a grown man when Dusty was still in the ring. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he started at 12. Right. You know, they was able to team together. So, uh, Kurt Henning. Mr. Perfect was up in age when he came to the WWE. Because you got to think, a lot of these guys had long territory careers before they came to the WWE. Right? right? So, they were established. Like, there wasn't like, these guys had, you You had to have 10 plus years before people would start looking at you to do the big things in the business. Now, we want a 25 year old to be a rock star. Now, some of that came from the Attitude Era. Where we, we, we shitted on guys who were in their 40s who helped make WCW big. But, and there was a lot of young talent in WWE. But the guy who carried the freight, Steve Austin, was in his 30s. Right. He had exactly. 10 plus years in the business. You know what I mean? You gotta understand, he had started in the late 80s. So by 99, he had been there. Like, Stunning Steve Austin had been in WCW for a long time. He had been in USWA. He had went to ECW. So he... He, he stayed the course. He went to multiple promotions. He traveled the roads. He did what he had to do. He learned the craft. And that's how he got to be superstar. Uh, Shawn Michaels, same thing. I mean, Shawn Michaels was giving you the business as recent as five years ago. Yeah. Right? Right. So, grab yeah, WrestleMania 25 is only five years ago. Might be greatest match of all time. Okay. Chris Jericho was in his 40s now, and people still marvel at Chris Jericho. So right. I do. I I I'm I, I just saying that to say that like sometimes I think we get the age thing because screwed, and we we've started treating pro wrestling like it's NFL. Where honestly, you have to learn the craft, and maybe. That late thirties, early forties is some prime years because you've seasoned enough. Now, when you get to fifty, you may need to start slowing it down. Yeah, we've seen fifty not work out so well, but in those forty years, I think there's some guys who still got a lot left to give, 
right? Well, it's because, um, well, and I know um, the way that I see it is, you know, they all, it, right now, it, you're right, what is supported is you being 20 something, you know, and they're like, yes, him. That's the guy we want. And it, it's fine because you think, yeah, young, athletic, fast, you know, quick with it, this, that, and the third. But as you pointed out, it you don't really know the business like that if you haven't been in it that long. And the ones that have been there for so many years, and have, are in their 30s and 40s and they've done this. They've been doing this, which makes them better at this. But it's in a sense of, you know, it's a person. It's the person. The experience makes better. It makes everything better. I think um, it's, it's a job. It's just like any other job to me. You know, the more experience you have at what you do, the better you'll be at. So when you start talking about having these uh, wrestlers that's been in this for like five years tops and they're at the top. And they're big and huge and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it it's just it, it's different and it makes for a different that you're just kind of like eh it could be better <laughs> you know it could be better especially if you're comparing it to the likes of like Rick Flair or Austin or somebody like that like it's that's when it just start. You really start to think like, yeah, it could be better. But I, I love the fact that young talent gets so much shine and greatness. But it, it's it it is what it is. You just have to take it for what it is. Right now, that's what we work with. Who's not to say that at one point in time in the future that changes and it, and it just kind of rotates. They say history repeats itself. So I would never put it past them to not make that happen again. Other news and notes. Um, I want to go in here. Um, we talked about McMahon and the fans call it the NYPD. Um, yeah, so yeah, that that's crazy. Um, let's see, the next one is Hogan praises Alberto Del Rio. This is weird. Um, he goes on Twitter and says, "Hey, hard work really pays off. He is in incredible shape and very impressive. His work rate, time, and instinct are main event." Uh. Really impressed with what he's done in the business. Need more guys like him. Um, I don't know if he thinks praising a Mexican will erase some of the racist takes that he's done before. But right. Uh, <laughs> he made headlines. Um, speaking of which, uh, Joy Styles is going off on fans on the IWC because, hey, they are bothering him about the pay-per-view and they are bothering him about the Slammy Awards and saying it's rigged and people going online complaining about Cena being at Raw and Roman Reigns being over. Right. Man, bruh. I'm going to tell you, I think the, the fact that they call, people call themselves the IWC takes this too seriously. Like, internet wrestling community and their supposed hierarchy of representatives sometimes I think it's a little quirky and weird and I mean I guess I'm considered part of it because I run a podcast and I run a website and that kind of thing but I I get the business man I break down to you why business works also it's the wrestling business mm-hmm. so like when the nerds get on the, on the, on the Twitter and they complain like why is Rock coming back to Wrestlemania 
Because he draws, you idiot. Exactly. What about the young guys? The young guys couldn't draw flies with shit. That's why. That's why they're not on WrestleMania right now. It's about butts and seats. It's about right. Jerry's World is a 80,000 seat stadium and they go configure it to make 90,000 or 100,000 seats for a wrestling event. Right. They need to sell it out. So the biggest box office movie attraction in the last 10 years is going to come there who happens to be a credible wrestler. I think people act like just because he's been making movies, he's not a credible wrestler. Third generation superstar. Right. Will be there to sell tickets. Who also happens to be related to what four of your top stars or up and coming stars right now? Exactly. Exactly. Five, five of your star superstars, right? Right. Tamina, ain't Tamina his cousin? Ain't Nia Jax his cousin? Who I'm about to talk about because I think she's about to change the scape of women's wrestling. Yeah. Uh, the Usos. His cousins, Roman Reigns, the right? world world heavyweight champion, champion, by the way, right? Yeah. So, I think there there's a thing. He's a part of the Samoan dynasty. Okay, I think we have something here. Why not sell tickets? I've already booked you his match. If he's going to have a match, that will sell tickets. So, I don't get people going on Twitter, and most of them have the egg picture on a profile or if you have a picture hugging your dog i know some things about you already yeah, right exactly. so like it's, it's just things i won't pay attention to and i'm sure i'll get emails and i'll get some negative tweets about these comments i don't really care because the block button is strong bro right. if i get tired of you the block button is strong and a lot of these people don't got blocked by enough people to know that by now but i you know I don't really care. You know what I mean? I just thought I'd throw that out there, too. I, I don't really care. I just think some people... I think people like to complain, and I think they, they feel like their opinion is valid. And, hey, man, all opinions ain't valid. Yeah. Sorry. They're not. So, and, some and, of them stupid as hell. And people forget sometimes that, that that just because you voice your opinion doesn't mean that people care. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Like... Just because you throw your opinion out there, and it might be one or two out there, and like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, those one or two people are probably idiots, just like you are. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you, yo, I'm thinking your first has to be cared about for it to even like matter. Otherwise, it's just it's just that your opinion. Everybody has opinion. Everybody has an asshole too. But I'm just, it's just that you just can't expect people to care like it doesn't matter you know the people that are since out speaking out about the rock being at wrestlemania obviously have forgotten who the rock is like and if you don't know <laughs> to the extent of who he is or what he has done you need to look it up i'm gonna need for you to go back into your wrestling history and go ahead and refresh yourself on that if you if you haven't known it already you need to learn it because at this point um you need to understand that this man is this this is what needs to happen. Like like, like just let's just be real about this situation. This is what needs to happen. Every time this goes on, someone always screams it's always screaming about, Oh, what about the young guys? What about the young talent? Well, it's not that they will not get their due. People forget that they have to include the stars that are on Raw every week and that are, are out there wrestling. No, they're not always going to be put out there in like an event like WrestleMania because some of them just suck too much. But I mean, that's but they make these appearances for a reason. Think about it. Like, like that's all you. That's all that needs to happen. You have to just think about this shit. And understand it from not only a business standpoint, but just from the the standpoint of a wrestling fan that actually makes sense. <laughs> like, I actually have some level of logic to why things happen the way they do. 
I I don't really pay attention to people that just have to talk just to hear themselves. It it just it's annoying. And that's half the time that's most because well, I won't even say half, like a good sixty to seventy percent of the time is exactly what's happening. Is that you just have all these people that just have to complain about something. You don't have to complain about something. You don't have to make a complaint about everything. You definitely don't have to what's your opinion out to the world about what you think would have to find this probably probably not even what you think, you're just saying it because you think it's popular. No one cares. Just leave it be. Let things happen the way that they are. The Brock will be at WrestleMania. I'm excited. I'm fairly excited about this. I mean, I'm not. I'm not alone, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Here, Rock. Um, word on the street, and right now it is rumor. I will repeat, it is rumor. It is believed that The Rock, Steve Austin, and Hulk Hogan will all appear in The Expendables 4, which is scheduled for release sometime in 2017. See, uh, I didn't see The Expendables 3. Did I even see the second Expendables? I don't know if I've watched the other two. Like, I've seen yeah, the first one. Ronda, Ronda Rousey was in 3. Uh, it's all right, The last one, Mel Gibson was the main villain. This one, Hulk Hogan will be the main villain, supposedly. Which I think what they do is taking disgraced people that were still stars in the '80s and making them the villain since they were disgraced, <laughs> like as a poke of fun, right? <laughs> right? So, Bill, hey, this is the second racist rant dude that get it. First, it was Mel Gibson. So now we'll take the other racist rant dude, Hulk Hogan, throw him in there because we gotta use '80s superstars anyway. Right. Uh, exactly. Now, The Rock doesn't qualify as an 80s superstar. The Rock, the only guy who doesn't fit, because he's only got. Well, Austin, he's been in before. He doesn't quite necessarily. Man, but it doesn't have to be 80s, because Terry Crews is an, 80, it is an 80s guy. He's not even an action movie guy, right. to be honest with you. But for what, he just has an action movie look, and you can't figure out why he hasn't been in action movies. <laughs> so. They just throw him in there. Um, it's, I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's it's crazy. Um, also, have you seen people say the barber barbershop movies are the Black Expendables? Oh, like why? they just throw random black people in a movie <laughs> that you. <had. laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, That's exactly what ended up happening. All right. but I, I I digress. That, that's going off the reservation here. Hey. Um, Oh, what we talked about earlier. English commentary has been confirmed for New Japan uh, Wrestle Kingdom 10. They're going to do what they did in King of Pro Wrestling, which I watched this this past fall, which we'll talk about also. Um, It's going to be Matt Stryker and Kevin Kelly are going to do the commentary. Last year, when Global Force put it, it was Matt Stryker and Jim Ross. Uh, Matt Stryker and Kevin Kelly did the commentary for King of Pro Wrestling. Now, I'll be interested to see if New Japan is ready for the volume of people to hit these servers, right? Right. The problem with King of Pro Wrestling, I don't think they were ready because it was they had a lot of lag issues, and I thought it was just me, but then I started reading up on it, and a lot of people had those lag issue problems. So, essentially, I'm going to say that they wasn't prepared that the American audience was going to tune in in that many droves because it was available with an English uh, commentary, right? Right. So, I'm going to say hopefully they're prepared because this Tokyo Dome show is 10 times bigger than the King of Pro Wrestling show. I mean, King of Pro Wrestling set the table for this. And like I said, I may do a preview show. I don't know, but I'm definitely doing a recap. It'll be a special edition of Ring Time Pro Wrestling. Um, it'll probably be just me because Keisha has a life and does not want to sit up at 3 o'clock in the morning on a random night to watch wrestling. So, hey, 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 hey. It depends on a night because Keisha has a third shift job. <laughs> That's pretty much what that is. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, depending on what night it is, she's up, but she's at work. Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go figure. So, watching live wrestling. That, that that's some true wrestling nerd shit. When you get up at like three thirty in the morning to watch wrestling from Japan, that's awesome. and you are up till six in the morning watching wrestling in Japan. Like that's some crazy. Um, but outside of that, so yeah, it's going down. Um, Okada and Tanahashi rematch from last year. I, I so much to talk about, but that's that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna let you know it's confirmed. That they is going down in the DM. <laughs> New Ratchet song that I like is going. Oh down. Lord Jesus! Mm-mm. Just not. Uh, Just bye. But uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for news. Also, uh, let me give you an update on the Sin Cara injury. If you watch Raw, you know Sin Cara hurt his shoulder on a big fall in the match that he had with Big E. Um. Shouts out to Sin Cardo. He gutted it out. Like he he stayed the course of that match and gutted it out. All right. Um, but yeah, he um suffered an injury to his shoulder. Um, and he, he suffered a dislocated shoulder. Um, not sure how long he'll be out. Probably maybe a couple of weeks to let that get back into place. But um, he said, "Hey man, I was in Brooklyn." In a dislocated shoulder couldn't stop me from performing. So, shouts out to him. Um, not something I recommend, but shouts out to somebody who gutted it out and was strong. You know, say, hey, hey, man, exactly. I'm ready to do this. All right? Right. All right. So, Keish, let's talk. Speaking of injuries, 2015, a year in review. Yes, Lord. Oh. Whoa. Are we really at this point? Jesus. Keep the year just started like yesterday. Like, are we already here? We're here. Um, and with year in review, Keish, I have to say this. Everybody got hurt. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah. Got hurt. It is a, a litany of people. This is the walking wounded. Okay. Uh, year in wrestling. Um, it starts at WrestleMania. After WrestleMania, after winning the IC title, Daniel Bryan's hurt. All right. And he may never come back. Daniel Bryan's down. Uh, it's amazing. All this happened in 2015. Um, Randy Orton got hurt twice in the year. All right. Uh, still ain't back. Might be out indefinitely. Got a neck surgery and stuff like that. Might not see him till like damn near WrestleMania. Tyson Kidd got a broken neck in a match with Samoa Joe. Seth Rollins, WWE champ, injured in Germany, won't be back till at least after WrestleMania. Cesaro won't be back till after WrestleMania 2016. Um, outside of the WWE keys. Jeff Hardy, hurt. Uh, still hasn't been confirmed when he's coming back. Um, NXT, Hideo Tommy went down this year, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Ain't been back yet. Sami Zayn just came back last week. Mm-hmm. Um, if we go into New Japan, Kota Ibushi. Out for the rest of the year. I mean, these there's this, this year, man. Woo, pretty big. And like the WWE was especially hit hard. I mean, this is a major roster moves. I mean, these were guys that were carrying a freight. Look, if I told you I could put on a show that had Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, Cesaro, Randy Orton, and Tyson Kidd, you'd be like, okay, right? I'm already. I'm, where do I I'm buy the ticket? Take, just take my money right now. Right. I'm not even concerned with the other guys. Hey, if I said Daniel Bryan wrestling Seth Rollins, I got Cesaro versus Orton, uh, Tyson Kidd with a mystery partner versus somebody, you got a show. Yeah. Um. Hey, and this ain't even counting like guys who are missing chunks of the year. Uh, Jay Uso was out for like half the year. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. 
So, I mean, Nikki Bella is out right now, right? Like, she's out for a significant amount of time. That's why you haven't seen her on TV. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're going down the line. This was, 2015 was rough on the injuries. It was hey. like you couldn't go to nobody. <laughs> no. No, you couldn't because the next thing you know, you end up hurt. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's awful. It's awful. Like, it's... Oh, God. Sting got hurt in the ring this year. Right. It pretty much effectively ended his career. Sting went out of wrestling after his match with Seth Rollins. Um, I, I, I don't think I'm missing anybody. No. Just going down the line. Like right. I said... Uh, the All the hurt and the pain. Um, a lot of injury, man. A lot of injury. I mean, I think it just highlights how brutal of a sport that it is, and right. what we have going on. Um, with that, um, also a very morbid thing. Um, 2015 was. Probably, I want to say, the most significant year of deaths in pro wrestling. Um, I mean, man, I'm looking at the list now. Uh, Piero Arguello in uh, AAA down in Mexico. I mean, that was just a sad event. I mean, and that happened in the ring. Um, Vern Gagne, AWA uh, founder. Great, great talent, um, great promoter, responsible for a lot of things that you saw at wrestling. Uh, Buddy Landell, uh, Nick Bockwinkle, the OG, the guy who did the promo better than just about anybody. Uh, Roddy Roddy Piper. I mean, dude was part of the first Darkade and first WrestleMania. Dusty Rhodes, one of the greatest of all time. I mean, it's. I can't say enough about it, all of them. Um, right here, we're gonna drop a little montage, a little tribute to those talents. So. Roddy, Pape, uh, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, uh, later on in this program, I know that you've accepted the challenge of the Tonga Kid, and you're going to be meeting him right here in front of a national television audience. But in the meantime... He's nothing. He's garbage. He's like where he oh, comes please. from. Nothing but Mr. garbage where he comes from. Same thing with your world's heavyweight champion. You're talking garbage. This guy comes out 280 pounds, and all of a sudden, everybody in Boston is standing up and cheering and talking about Hulkamania. Uh, oh, Hot Rod walked out, and all of a sudden, everybody's booing, thinking, Hot Rod ain't going to stand no chance. <laughs> After all, Hot Rod, he's the only guy. All he's ever done was, was actually destroy Jimmy Schneider. Look, our legend. All he's ever done is actually destroy Andre the Giant. Unless someone was to sucker me, they could never get an even shot at me. I bounced the world on my little fingertips. And then all of a sudden, Hot Rod goes into Boston and he becomes victorious. I actually beat the champion, but no. You don't want to give me the belt. No, no. Let me tell you something, mister. I am the boss. I'm the one that's going back in there for the rematch. Not because I want it. Because the champion wants it. Because I made him look like a fool. They raised my hand on the first man to ever beat the champion. I am the champion, Boston. Thank I you will very much, Roddy Roddy Piper. I am Pants. the true Stay tuned, more action after this. Take his blood. Welcome to TSN. At this time, my extreme privilege to bring out the man who will always be known as the champ. I don't care who's carrying the belt. The former AWA heavyweight champion, the producer of AWA wrestling, none other than Mr. Vern Gagne. Vern, let's talk, yes, AW, let's talk about AWA wrestling. All right, let's do it. What would you like to know? I would like to know uh, who you think the challengers, the top challengers now to Rick Martell are. Well, you've got a multitude of them. I guess you'd have to say the Road Warriors, who are the tag team champions, are certainly in line uh, for that uh, title. You've got King Kong Brody, managed by the Sheik. Uh, you've got the fabulous ones, a great, great tag team combination. You've got Jim Brunzel and my son Greg Gagne. They're a tag team called the High Flyers. He's been out, as you know, with an injury for some time. 
should be back to wrestling soon. I'm referring to my Greg. He was put out of the wrestling by one King Kong Brody, and we certainly haven't forgot about that. But there are many, many challenges. I'm just talking about American and Canadian people right now. But all over the world, uh, there are challenges. Uh, Mr. Saito out of Japan, Mr. Saruta out of Japan, Big Otto Vance from Austria, uh, the European champion. So there are tremendous Carlos Colon, Puerto Rico. Uh, there's people from all over the world that are certainly leading challengers. And wherever the champ goes, he's got his work cut out for him because those people that he has to wrestle, wherever he goes, are their number one challengers in that league or that area or that country. If anyone in the world knows what Rick Martell is going through right now, you do. The travel schedule, having to fight nothing but top contenders, night after night. After and this title belt. Mad Dog Vachon, Algeria, Otto Vance, Austria, Andre the Giant, France, Billy Robinson from England, Saito, Japan, you name it. From every place in the country and in the world, they are here, not only for the money. It is the most dangerous of them all. And even though a lot of people are going to pick the big man possibly for a winner, it could be a Greg Gagne or a Buck Zumhoff, because the smart little man, if he watches his P's and Q's, could come out on top of it. And I know one thing, that man might be the smartest man, and I'm going to have to watch him closely. The sad thing is that even though I will have to defend the heavyweight championship of the world later, they still want to try to eliminate my manager, Bobby Heenan, right now. Bobby Heenan, I'm going to tell you something. I've got probably one of the greatest partners I could ever have, Mr. Saito. He's a master of karate, jiu-jitsu, and all that. And Stevens and Lanza, two men that I fired on the spot. When I'm done with them, they'll be able to play for the University of Minnesota because they're used to having a bunch of losers on their team. And I'm going to tell you something, Ray the Crippler Stevens and Black Jack Lanza or White Jack Lanza, whatever you like to call yourself now, I'm going to pull that white cowboy hat down so far, rip that hanging judge overcoat off, you, pull those white boots off you, and I'm going to stuff them right down Ray the Crippler Stevens' throat. And then I'm going to stand you both up and watch Saito go through you like you've seen those Vigimatics they advertise on TV. You're just going to... Oh, oh, wait, hold up. Gentlemen, gentlemen, look at this. Bobby Heenan and Nick Buckwinkle exit stage left. Black... American Dream He's just a common man Working hard with his hands He's just a common man Working hard for the man Hey, he's a American dream Hey, he's a... Ladies and gentlemen, the world television champion, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty, welcome, but... What about Jimmy Vay? What, what, he tried it. They almost got him again. This has got to stop somewhere. Let me tell you something, David Crockett. This is going to cease to exist. It's going to stop now. I don't play no game. And I don't take no prisoners. Vayne's wall is going to have a lot of help. And tell the black that you come out here and you talk about baby Don Paul driving that boy putting that boy out of wrestling, talking about boy this and boy that. Well, David, you know my youngest, Till Margaret, is two and a half years old. And I tell her a story about the cold-blooded sausage maker that's walking through the woods. And these little pigs run around. And he grabs the little pigs and he making cold-blooded sausage out of them. But always in that story, when she's scared and her eyes are big as silver dollars, the American dream comes in save the little piggies but in this case i am the cold-blooded sausage maker Tully blanchard and you the little piggies and you running around with one big pig that's right now i hope my mama don't call david and get on for me talking this way but she ain't no lady she ain't no ten She's nothing more than something off the, I ain't even gonna talk about it. And you talking about now, you gotta deal with a dealer. That's fine. Cause that's risky business. I am risky business. I am the cool, bloody sausage maker. Mm -mm -mm. Okay.
Yes. So yeah, on awesome. the back end of that, um, Keish, any memories, things you want to share about any of the departed? Um, um I have to honestly say that the best has in this year have been very hard hitting. You know, um the sudden death of Dusty and of uh, Rowdy were hard. Like I have to honestly just say that, you know, it was, it, it's crazy because those were moments where it was kind of like, he was just here yesterday. <laughs> like, like, you know, like it's, it, he was just talking yesterday. Like he was just there. Yeah. And, I mean, both, both were very unexpected. Um, yeah. Dusty was an integral part of NXT. Piper was was pounding out podcast every week. I mean, you know what I mean. It was like you said, it was here then gone. Right. Um, and it, they happened so close to each other too. Yeah, yeah. And that was another thing that just got me. It was just kind of like wow, you know. Um, I remember, and it was crazy because, of course, um, the first places that I found out online about both of them were. I think Facebook and it was just kind of like oh my god are you serious like at first um I just I I was like no that's not true and then I found out that it was and I was like oh shit <laughs> like like but they were just like and it and it was just moments of like where they were just on TV like yesterday like they were just seen doing this like last week um I think at, uh, all, all the deaths when it comes to the wrestling world, that can be very hard to take, you know, um, because of the fact that there is they play so big of a part in what it is today, and like for like people like Dusty and Piper, it it was just that, you know. Hell, Dusty was still involved. Um, at times, Piper was still involved. Um, I, I was. I've watched. I think the. I watched the entire table for three series. The entire table for three series, and the very first episode was WrestleMania. I think it was WrestleMania Legends, is what it was called, and it featured Rowdy Gene and Mister Wonderful. This was made before he died, like right before he died. And that's what was so crazy about it was um, it, it was just stuff like that. All of them, it, it was just tragic. That's probably, probably the best words I can use to describe it. It was just tragic. And it is like train wrecks, you know, like it's just like, wow, like, damn. Um, I think that that was to me, like those are the words that I would use to describe like the, the best that had happened this year in wrestling. Like it's, it was just tragic. Like I don't, I really just can't, Crap! Like any other word to use for it. So those two names came up for me in my mind because they were so sudden. They were so sudden, and it was so gripping. It was like, no, <laughs> like that didn't happen, but it did, and. I just don't even know how to uh, describe any of, of them any other way. So, I think that's pretty much all I can say about that. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, Keish, now that I have taken the show down, <laughs> I'm going to pick it back up. 
Um, favorite matches from 2015? Whew, um, I'm gonna go. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Probably I'm I'm gonna be all over the place with this because <clears throat> it's been so many matches this year. Of course, you know we're talking about a whole year here, so it's it's been a lot. But I'm I'm gonna go the first one. I'm going to go ahead and throw out there. Iron Man match. <clears throat> Bailey and um, Sasha Banks for the NXT Women's Championship. I'm sorry. Like, I, I have to say that that match was just so compelling for me. Like, I, I just, I have to mention this one first. Like, if there was anything that I'm going to mention first for this year is that I'm sorry like everything else I have to like kind of take it for the back seat because that that was so monumental for women um and for NXT and just period you know um I'm not saying that it's never been done before the match was just fucking incredible like that was just that's to me was like the best part of it all. It was just incredible. Everything about it was just incredible. Um, both women are incredible wrestlers. And sometimes with WWE in itself, they um, take away from women and their wrestling abilities a little bit. Like, because of the whole diva stigma and all that kind of stuff. It's really kind of hard to stomach because it's like they're they're still wrestlers and I need them to be wrestlers, <laughs> you know, so give them the chance to be wrestlers. And this was one of those moments where they definitely got that opportunity. Um, there were a lot of, it was a lot of tag team stuff going on this year. And it was a lot of things that got me. Um, I have to say that as far as favorite matches go, um, I have to say that was my favorite. And anything else that I can think of, you know, matches involving, of course, Dean and Neville and a lot of just high, I, I just intense moments of wow. Like, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania was to me just wow you know um but it really was one of my favorite matches um another one at Roman and Dean for the title and the reason why I point this one out is because we're talking about two people that actually really actually just had a wrestling match like friends that actually just had a wrestling match. <laughs> like, sometimes when I watch wrestling and I see, like, you have the friends that have a match, you know, little friendly competition, you know, whatever like that. Sometimes we get a little lenient, they got a little, they take a little easy on each other. These two gave it everything because this was for the title. They gave it everything. And held nothing back. I actually enjoyed that. Um, Kevin Owens and Cena was crazy. It was crazy in itself, to say the least. Um, it was definitely, that was definitely one match I thought it was just wow. Like, I thought it was crazy as hell, but it was good crazy in a good way because of the things that were seen when I think in their first match with each other um, was 
definitely something that I enjoyed. And, uh, God, there's so many. <laughs> I just, there's so many. Like, I, I think that's, I, I'm, I'm going to end it at that. But, I mean, I can, of course, at some point, I'm going to think of more random matches in my head and be like, oh, my God, I love that one, too. I, it's so many to run through. But, I, yeah, those are the ones that stood out for me. Um, yeah, of course, I can't forget about Sting. I can't forget about Sting. Because he still to me looks good in the ring so when he faced Triple H I was it was breathtaking to me I know like I know like the the God is why I, well it wasn't that great it was that great to me I enjoyed it fuck it <laughs> like it was that awesome to me I enjoyed it and so your, your favorite matches do not have to fit a criteria I don't even have to agree and I own the property I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So I I just, just want to know what your favorite matches are. Um, I'm going down because I just want people to say, "Hey, man, just uh, yeah, what you what you feel like, what you like." I will go down the line. Mine will slightly agree and slightly disagree. Okay, not even disagree. I'm just talking about my favorites for the year, right? It's not even. It's not even agreement to be agreed or disagreed at this point, right? Right. All right. Uh, so let's start. I'm going to go all over the place. My matches cover all over the world. Um, Royal Rumble, Triple Threat, John Cena, Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar. I thought it was an incredible storytelling match. Uh, I I couldn't call the ending. Uh, Brock came out of nowhere, but I thought Seth Rollins proved he was ready for prime time in that match. Yeah. Um, he was a Money in the Bank winner. He was convincing. Uh, he stood up. He handled business. Um, also in January, um, Wrestle Kingdom Nine. There was two matches that really stuck out. Uh, Nakamura. Versus Kota Ibushi. I thought that was an incredible match. I thought Kota was on his way to the prime time. To his establish himself as a main event person in New Japan. Before his injury. Um, and then of course the main event. Okada versus Tanahashi. Which will be the rematch this year. Uh, it's the same story. The old gunfighter trying to protect his territory. And there's the guy who's not really the young buck, but he's trying to, you know, state claim that he's the man now. So there's that one. Um, also, um, while I'm in Japan, uh, King of Pro Wrestling, Okada versus uh, AJ Styles, I thought was a very good match. Uh, I thought AJ was going to take it, man. I thought he was going to take it home. Uh, his Bullet Club homies was there. They just quite couldn't pull it out. Couldn't steal that match. Um, Prince Puma and uh, Johnny Nitro, which I forgot what his name is, Johnny, in uh, Lucha Underground. I uh, thought put on a good show this year. Um, the first scene of Kevin Owens' match was incredible. Here's the thing. You're going to hear a lot of Cena in this. Oh, which I never thought. <laughs> Uh, the U.S. Open Challenge was an incredible thing, and he put on a lot of good matches. Uh, Cena, Sami Zayn was flames. Boy, I could watch that over and over again. Um, Sami hurt himself in that match, but man, it was gutsy, and man, you rooted for him. Um, I thought. Cena and Owens did a good job. I thought Cena and Cesaro did a good job. Um, let me see. I can't take anything away from the Sasha and Bailey matches, both at NXT Brooklyn and the Iron Woman match at Full Sail. So, um, 
those were incredible, incredible matches. Um, and I'm trying to like go down the line and make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, I thought Roman Reigns did a good job with Cesaro on Raw during the tag team tournament. Not the tag team tournament. I'm sorry, the WWE title tournament. Um, with that, that's about it for right now. Like you said, it's hard to cover a year's worth of wrestling. It's hard to cover a lot of different promotions. And I'm sure I'm missing something. Um, Jay Lethal has some good matches in ROH this year. And, uh, proved himself to be a solid champion of course of course of course so you know and a guy who could you know be dependent upon so um gotta gotta appreciate that um so yeah i mean that's it for matches of the of the year for right now i mean like i said that segment probably could go on and on and on but we are like an hour plus into a show. Um, <laughs> also, man, this year I'm going to say was big in other companies trying to strive to be something, right? Oh, yes. Jesus. <laughs> um, it was. No, I mean, you got to think about it. Okay. Lucha Underground built a phenomenon, right? Right. Coming on. Wednesday night. Wednesday night got extremely competitive. You had Lucha, you had TNA, ROH jumped in the mix, NXT yeah. was already there. Right. It was a lot going on. Like you just had to say, look, this stuff I'll watch later, this stuff I'll watch now, and I'll try to keep up. Two right? words. Wrestling overload. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. And here's the thing. With the WWE producer three hours of Raw, it is like try to get you to commit to two hours of SmackDown if you just watch WWE main roster product that's five hours a week right right if you try to keep up with ROH that's an hour every week TNA drops another two hours on you Lucha Underground dropped an hour on you uh, NXT has an hour for you and if you want to watch like the ASX shows where New Japan was showing like their older shows for previous year that's another hour so you have to really budget your wrestling time yeah now uh, like I said I think Lucha Underground proved to be a very strong show uh, very good production values uh, the problem is El Rey it's not really a problem with El Rey I just think they need a bigger distributor. Yeah. They're going to need to be on a bigger network, especially because of those production values. You're going to have to. I'm sure that show costs a lot to produce. Now, it's not live, so they save some money there. Right. But other than that, I'm sure it costs them a good amount of money. Um, and they don't tour or anything like that to support the show either. So to get the ad dollars this year, they got to try to find a bigger venue after this year to try to take that show to the next level um what i would try to do and i think they had deals in the works but it didn't quite work out um i I would try to get with univision but i know or telemundo i don't know which one because one of them air cmll already but i I have to figure which one is owned by nbc universal because that could be a conflict of interest also right because something owned by NBC Universal, which pays $140 million a year to the WWE to produce programming, is not probably, it's probably in the deal that, hey yeah, man, y'all can't be putting no wrestling on. Right. Exactly. No, nobody else is wrestling. But they got to tap into that Spanish speaking market in the United States that appreciates lucha wrestling. You know what I mean? Also, that has enough distribution in English speaking homes to you know still be seen because here's the thing what they need to do because they still even though a lot of Spanish networks don't do this offer an alternative English broadcast (coughs) and have an English and Spanish broadcast right now they just do an English broadcast on El Rey and that's fine 
But I mean, maybe if you had some kind of alternative, I think you had a better chance at the distribution of it. Exactly. Um, Evolve making moves. I mean, their partnership with WWE is going to be huge. Uh, I like Gabe. Uh, me and Gabe talk about him doing the show. Hopefully, that happens in 2016. Um, schedules didn't permit for the, like <laughs> the last couple of times we tried it. But hopefully in 2016 we get to together. I think Gabe Sapolsky is an incredible guy that uh, has a lot of history in the business. He's a Paul Heyman protege. Um, them working with Evolve will give WWE an inroads to a lot of top indie talent, and I think that will be their new development. Basically, when you get signed before going to NXT, they're going to polish you a little bit in Evolve, and since they're based out of Florida. They'll get to run some shows down there. Then they'll slide you over to NXT. Also, they'll use some of the NXT talent that has produced their name to help sell more tickets at Evolve shows to kind of boost up the the clientele there and boost up the ticket prices. And you know, yeah. one hand I watch the one hand I watch the other. Um, I think WWE is very invested in developmental, and I think they very much understand what the indies are now. Like, I don't think they understood that 10 years ago, but I think now, this is why they signed a Kevin Owens and a guy like that. I think they understand the lifeblood of what the new industry is going to be, and they're invested in what the, the indie shows are going to provide. Um, Chikara still chugging along. Um, as you know, PWG and ROH have went to a joint venture. So they're really? going to do some shows together. They've reached an agreement where they're going to do some shows together. So 2016 is going to be monstrous, right? Yeah. ROH already works with New Japan and already has a talent exchange and an agreement with them. So I think that expands the worldwide audience and I thought it, I think it also helps New Japan makes inroads in the in the United States audience. With a company who is clearly, I think, is the number two company right now in America. Let's just put that out there. Mm-hmm. Now, working with PWG, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, for those who don't know, they are a very huge company on the West Coast. So now what it's going to do is take that Ring of Honor talent and give them maybe exposure and inroads where they didn't have it on the West Coast. Also, with their TV expanding with this new deal with Comet TV, I think the idea is now... They'll use some of the PWG guys who already have popularity on the West Coast. When they show pops on Comet TV, wrestling fans will be familiar with some of those guys too. And that'll help push the product on that coast. Uh, PWG, co- co- coincidentally, a lot of people, if you don't peruse the internet, watch a lot of YouTube, you may not know who PWG is. But a lot of your favorite guys have wrestled there. Um, a lot of the indie guys who wrestled in ROH and stuff like that have already done matches over there so now you'll see more of the pwg guys kind of wrestling roh and that will give them more exposure and expose that company on the east coast a little bit more because mm-hmm. roh has a much more strong code because sinclair is a strong company along the eastern seaboard right so interesting to see how both of those work their work their way out uh jeff jarrett la- launched global force wrestling this year as an offshoot he uh, worked of with course. TNA. They did their invasion angle. Um, and TNA, shouts out to TNA, man. TNA is the company that won't die. Man, you uh, know what? I give it to them. I give it to them, Keith. They got like okay. 10 lives. I don't understand it. A guy I work with called them the cockroaches of pro wrestling. Like, they are not <laughs> going anywhere. Shut up. They are, they are sticking around. Okay, so... Destination America didn't work out. It didn't work out for them or ROH. Right. I think it was just an experiment. The people there weren't committed to wrestling. They just knew this product draws a lot of viewers. Okay. That's, That's over now. All right. We we thought they weren't going to survive after Spike. They found a deal after Spike. Well, they found another deal. They're going to Pop TV, Pop which TV. is the former TV guy channel. Hey, guess really? what? I didn't have Destination America. You know what I got? I got pr- freaking pop TV. So. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, and like I said, all this starts big. Like next week, it it just rocking and rolling. Um, they're moving to Tuesday night. I think that is huge. Yeah. Here's the thing with Tuesday. 
I think Tuesday is away from everything, but close enough to everything. What I mean by that, Tuesday night, Raw is on Monday. WWE doesn't do anything on Tuesday, right? Right. Unless they start airing SmackDown Live, which don't know if that's going to happen. They are moving to USA. Anything's possible with that. Wait, this is the first time SmackDown is on USA, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Expect big changes with SmackDown with them being on USA. But being on Tuesday, I think uh, me and the collective used to talk about this. Tuesday would be a perfect night to compete. So Tuesday, people still in that wrestling mode. It's not towards the end of the week. I think Thursday is too competitive of a television night. Right. Too much good stuff on Thursday to take television. Wednesday night, uh So Tuesday, nobody was really utilizing Tuesday. And nobody has to ever really utilize Tuesday. So they'll use Tuesday on Pop TV. Pop TV has way more distribution than Destination America. Um, they're not available in HD. I don't know if that necessarily matters right now. But they are available. So you can you can still tune in to Pop TV. Um, let's see if they figure it out. Let's see if they convert that 800,000. And they'll probably get that number back up to a million people every week. If they can conv- convert that to pay-per-view buys, and they can convert that to butts of the seats that they live show. If they can do that, they got a shot. Right? Um, I think EC3 has proved himself as a capable champion. I think he's a solid heel. Uh, I think they're going to have to find some more people to work off of him, though. And this is one thing they've, they've always struggled with. They got to develop the younger talent. Right? Right. They can't de- depend on people who have wrestled other places. They've got to develop the homegrown and stick with them. And that's another problem that they've always had. They don't stick with the homegrown. They're going to have to stick with them. But, um, hey man, TNA, still still chugging. Still chugging. Um, AAA and CMLL both um, have made big roads. Have made big hype in 2015. Triple um, A produced that much hype match between Rey Mysterio and Mr. C's, aka the original Sin Cara. Um, they found they got it done. A match that the WWE couldn't even put together. Right. Um, the G1 Climax Tournament was huge for New Japan and got a lot of viewers, got a lot of people in, in the U.S. audience engaged. They're making a serious play at the United States. I think they want to be that second company in the United States. Working with ROH gives them inroads. I don't think they're going to work with the WWE as much. They're going to do some things. Like they let Liger work at NXT and they'll right. loan some guys out. Now they heard WWE is interested in Nakamura. They're not going to let any of their guys go. Um, New Japan has said they willing to pay seven figures to keep guys in New Japan. That's crazy. You gotta understand, over there they're big. I mean, understand Wrestle Kingdom is gonna be a Tokyo Dome show, which is gonna be like sixty thousand, seventy thousand. It, 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 it's the only thing that's close to equivalent to WrestleMania. And people who've done both shows say they feel like it's the equivalent. Right. So understand, they're the company. In Japan, there used to be about five strong territories back in the territory days. Them, all Japan. New Japan is an offshoot of all Japan. I don't no need to go into the hierarchy of the story of it. But New Japan's the last man standing, right? And uh hey man, I ain't gonna say they can go buck by buck with the WWE, but they got enough money to sell the talent on sticking with us and we can do bigger things. Right. Right? Right. It's something that like let's say our ROH can't do. ROH could probably pay a guy two hundred grand. But at the end of the day, if he proves himself to be a big enough talent, WWE can crush that. And you know what I mean? He's gone. New Japan can pay a guy 800 grand and say, look, man, if you stick with us and follow the vision, you can you can be bigger than this. And we can probably, you know what I mean? Even though they offer you and they're they not going to offer you that much. They're not going to match this deal anyway for unproven talent. Also, they have that stick with the home country thing you know what i mean yeah so i i they're 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 trying to make that claim they want they want some of the u.s market so 
when they said they weren't going back to Global Force for the pay per view, they realized with King of Pro Wrestling, they felt like we could do English commentary without paying somebody. Even though they made money, don't get me wrong, they made money on the pay per view last year. They figured they're going to go to WWE model with New Japan World because people are already paying for it, and they're just going to have an English commentary available for this show. And like I said, hopefully they've addressed the lag issues and they've addressed what happened in King of Pro Wrestling. Like I said, I just think it was too many people hitting the server. But uh, I I will look out for New Japan. I think they made big strides in the U.S. market in 2015, and I think in 2016 should be no different. Yeah, um, true, 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 true. Uh, with that, I think I almost covered the entire year in wrestling. Anything else that you got that um um let's see debuts um I definitely wanted to bring that up because there were a few there were a few debuts this year not only uh of course I, I always focus on uh, WWE so uh, for me watching the debut of Kevin Owens and uh, Tyler Breeze and of course Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte. All watching all of them go to the main roster was exciting. Um, I, my favorite debut for this year for the main roster definitely was Kevin Owens. Um, it was uh, it was definitely what I expected it to be. Like I have to honestly say, it was it it. I was I, I'm thoroughly. Glad that happened. Um, when you start talking about NXT, this is when we start talking about Samoa Joe, James Storm, and Nia Jax, and you just—I was shocked. Like, well, when I came to when it came to Samoa Joe, it was already being like talked about beforehand. I just needed to see it actually happen. Like, I didn't believe it. I wasn't going to. I was like, oh, my God, just no. So I didn't automatically just throw that into my head. Like, yeah, you know, oh, my God, he's coming. Yeah. No. Because moments, as we all know, can go far left real quick. So I didn't even, uh, I, I didn't even try to grasp that this is happening until it actually happened. Now, James Storm was, that to me was my shocker. Like, it was just kind of like, wow. Really? So, um, but I was excited about it. James Storm is one of my favorite wrestlers. And I, I love watching him on, on, on TV and everything. So that was definitely something that I uh, thoroughly enjoyed. Now, I, I know you had talked about bringing up Nia Jackson. I wanted to bring her up myself because the woman's incredible <laughs> like, like i i definitely um want to give her every level of applause um she's awesome uh so yeah debuts this year i have to say in wrestling were everything <laughs> like like that was one of the best words i can use to describe pretty much how uh um, that aspect of, of wrestling this year is just the, the debuts for everything. Yeah. Um, with that, uh, I think that's it, Keish. I think we've we've, we've crushed everything. Uh, it's been a crazy year. year. It's been a crazy year. Out. 2016 has a lot more to offer from us and from the rest of the world. Of course. And we'll be here to cover it all. Uh, expect the website to be updated more often in 2016. I think uh, last year we had 99 posts, which is very much slacking. <laughs> uh, hopefully, my goal for 2016 is like 150 uh, to 200 posts for well, the year. My goal this year is to make sure you're not the only one. <laughs> like, trust me, I keep talking about I'll do this and do that, and then I go to sleep and I completely forget. So. I keep expect more contribution from your co-host because I definitely have so much stuff that I can write about in my head and I don't ever put it down. Like, like, like I never put it down. So I definitely will help you out with that. All right. 
So you heard it. It is recorded. It is going into podcast layer. So now I can bring it up. I can play back your recorded voice if you're saying this <laughs> and use it against you. So of course. Let's understand that that is happening. Uh, with that, uh, we'll close this show out. We appreciate you listening. And hey, man, retweet, share, download, and uh, tell five friends about it. And we out. Happy New Year. Yay. Merry New Year. Time to play the game. Time to play the game. And now you play it all about control And if you can take it, it's all about your debt And if you can pay it, it's all about pain And who's gonna make it? I am the game, you don't wanna play me I am control, no way you can shake me I am heavy debt, no way you can pay me I am the pain, and I know you can't take me Look over your shoulder, ready to run Like a Cleveland bitch from a smoking gun I am the game, and I may do So move on out, you can die like a fool Try to figure out what my mood's gonna be Come on over, son, no, why don't you ask me? Don't you forget there's a price you can pay Cause I am the game and I want to play